Now we're going to take a look at the impact effort matrix, which is a personal favorite here um, with the BossNet team. So let's take a look. Here we have on the screen a picture of the impact effort matrix. As you can see, it looks pretty simple. And um, one of the things I love about it is that it is. It's really a great tool for brainstorming. What it is, is two lines. It, you can, and on one side you have impact, and on the other side you have effort. And what you use it for is it helps you decide uh, which of numerous ideas appear to be the easiest and have the most impact. So it really forces you to consider the value of the activities or tasks that you've made a list of. So the way that you use the impact effort matrix is you have a question or you have a project that you're thinking about, which we're gonna do a few examples of in a minute. So the one of the examples that we'll have is we're going to do is how are we going to increase regular attendance at our after school program? And you might have a few ideas that you've thrown around. You've said, maybe we can um, have a monthly attendance party. So kids who have attended 90% of the days that are open will have a party for them. So you say, that's a great idea. Let's think about how much effort is it going to take and will it have the impact that we want it to have? And then you put it on the matrix. So the idea is to think about, you have this great idea, is it going to have the impact we want it to have? Is that impact going to be low or high? And how much effort is it going to take? So really thinking about what is the value of these ideas we have and how much effort are we going to need to put into them? So once you have all these ideas up on the board, it's really easy then to think about, okay, which of these ideas will be the best use of our time? So let's now look at um, this other picture that kind of divides your ideas into these different quadrants. So as you can see, if something is high impact and low effort, that means that it's probably a quick win and that's something that's really great and you probably should do it. If it's in that upper right hand corner, that means it's high effort, but also high impact. And so there's probably strategy and planning required. And so it might be something you want to do, but also might be something that takes a little bit more time. If it's low impact and low effort, you should ask yourself, is it really useful? Probably not, but since it's low effort, it might be. Not sure. Um, and if it's low impact but high effort in that um, lower quadrant on the right hand side, um, it's probably a thankless task and you really shouldn't be doing it. So really keeping that in mind. So when you're doing an impact effort matrix, it's really important to keep in mind to define what you're measuring the impact against. So don't just walk in saying, okay, impact effort, we all understand what that means. But thinking about what does effort mean? Or sorry, what does impact mean? So in the example of the um, increasing regular attendance, uh, when we say impact, we are thinking um, getting the kids excited about coming to the program more often. So that is what our impact measurement would be. Um, it's also important to have a common understanding of time and effort. What some people might think um, is high effort might mean, oh, that takes me more than two hours. But other people might have more time and flexibility in their schedule and think that time or effort might be more like, oh, that takes a couple weeks to get done. So make sure that everybody's on the same page there and that effort level and um, what's considered high effort is continued on throughout the brainstorming session. Also, the purpose during the brainstorming time and using the tool isn't to delegate responsibility. Each of these ideas probably won't be used. So you should re delegate responsibility at the end when you're deciding what to do, but at that moment is not the time to do it. And don't let it become just an activity where you think of great ideas, but let it become something where you, then you choose action steps to do at the end. Because it can be easy to come up with all these wonderful ideas and get very excited about them, but make sure that at the end, then you come up with a plan for how you're going to complete them. And it might be that, you know, your brainstorming session when you're creating the impact effort matrix takes quite a bit of time, and that's all right. You don't need to assign responsibility and create action steps immediately, but then say, okay, great, we've done this. Let's come back to it next week, 11 o'clock on Wednesday, whenever it might be, and we're going to really decide which of these are our best ideas, and then we're going to create a plan around them. 
So make sure that you're using it as a tool to then make a plan um, and make a decision about which strategies are going to be best for your program. All right, let's look at some key examples now. Let's look at some examples now of how you can use the impact effort matrix in real after school program examples. Let's start with first, um, thinking about how to increase regular attendance at an after school program. So here we have our impact effort matrix. And we, so on one side we have our impact, and on the side we have the effort. I've drawn um, these small dotted lines to make our grids just so we can think about um, if, you know, we have this area where it's um, low hanging fruits versus the effort um, versus the thankless tasks and thinking about those areas. Um, but you don't have to have those if you don't want to. Um, as we're thinking about it, remembering that we're going to have a defined, um, a defined impact. So for our example of we're think using this one to say, how do we increase regular attendance at our after school program? Our understanding of impact is going to be getting the kids excited about coming to the program and coming more often. So how do we get the kids hyped about being there every day and really wanting to come to the after school program. So in this example, you would be talking with your team about it, getting ideas, and um, the way that we like to do it at Boston is we put the different ideas down on post-it notes and we write the ideas down and then we put them up here so that we can easily move them around. Um, and sometimes later then we put people's responsibility on them, we can color code them, lots of different ideas there. Um, and I just have a few examples to put up. I will say that sometimes these brainstorming sessions will look a lot bigger. <laughs> but um, for today, we just have a few examples. So maybe one of the examples that somebody comes up with is they say, what if we congratulated um, at Circle um, every time that um, a child has been there for two weeks straight, um, we congratulate them. And you say, all right. So you know, that will make the child feel pretty special, but it is still a congratulation. So we'll put that at kind of the medium impact. The child will feel excited about it. And the effort's kind of low. We track attendance already, um, but we'll just have to make sure that we keep track of it. And maybe we'll just double check each Friday. So we'll put it here. It's kind of low effort, but still pretty low impact. So we're congratulating the children at circle time. Um, another idea is that we're going to visually track attendance. So maybe that means that we're putting a thermometer on the board or um, we are putting something, you know, making a fun display that is visually tracking each child's attendance so that they can see it. So we know that the kids at our program love displays and they get pretty excited about it, but it is very time consuming to keep up with the display and we know that that will be pretty hard. And we also know that maybe the excitement will kind of trail off. So we think the impact will be pretty high and we think the effort will be pretty high, um, but we could probably assign it to one of our assistant group leaders. So we're gonna put it here. And remembering that this isn't an exact science, you know, doesn't have to be a specific, you know, you don't have to say, oh, well effort, here's one week, here's two weeks. You can do that if that's what works best for you. But remembering we're using this mostly as brainstorming right now. Um, <clears throat> then another idea is to have a monthly attendance party. So if kids attended 90% of the days opened, then they get to go to a party on the last day of the month. And maybe that party is uh, that they get to have a special snack or they get to watch a movie or they get to have extra time outside, whatever it might be. So the effort to plan it might be um, high depending on what it is. We'll say that uh, you plan on having um, a special party and so they're going to you know have a certain staff that has to plan it so the effort will be pretty high and we think that the impact will be you know the kids will feel special but you also know that the kids really like the program and so they might um, rather do the other pieces so maybe lower impact but pretty high effort so it'll go there Then somebody suggests, well, I worked at a program once that gave out a prize for attending 
um, a certain number of days. So um, I would suggest if you're using the sticky note, maybe um, be more specific. So is the prize um, a t-shirt or is the prize um, a popsicle? Because that would have a different impact. But let's give the example. I've worked at a program before where um, when the kids attended 100 days, they got um, a t-shirt that says, I've attended 100 days this year. And um, they loved wearing them. <laughs> so say that it's something big like that. And so we know that the impact will be high because it's something the kids um, the kids love it when they get t-shirts. And we know that the effort will be high because it will be a high price. Um, and we'll have to track 100 days. So we'll have to make a new document that does that. So we'll put that up there. And then somebody else comes up with, all right, if a kid attends Monday through Thursday, then on Friday they're going to get a prize. So maybe since this is um, weekly, that prize will be a little smaller. Maybe it's a special snack, um, something like that. Or maybe it's that they get a book to take home. So we think, okay, well, kids love getting prizes. So this impact might be a little higher. Um, and since it's weekly, that it'll be constantly in their minds. That effort's probably going to have to be pretty high because it's happening every week. But we also think that it might start off here, but also might move down because if the kids are getting a prize every week, it might feel less special. Um, but also maybe if it's something like they're entered into a lottery each week, so only one kid gets it, it might feel more special. So we're going to keep it kind of here in the middle. So as we look at this impact effort matrix, we kind of see that we've run into a few different ideas. We see that um, maybe the monthly attendance party isn't the way to go because it is a lot of effort, but not as high of impact. Um, and we also see that this visually tracking attendance, it, it's kind of in the middle of effort, but seems to be high impact. So that might be something we want to talk more about. So think, using this is a great way to think about, okay, what is be the best use of our time? And what is the value of our ideas when we're thinking about impact versus the amount of time and effort that needs to be put into it? And I will say a lot of times using this, we'll come up with much more ideas than this. But I wanted to use this as an example because this is something that people, you know, realistically deal with, especially late um, programs that work with schools that have late release. And so thinking about how do we get the kids to regularly attend and really stay with the program so that we can have the most impact with them and really get to spend the most time with them. So I'd love for you to think to yourself um, for a few minutes. After looking at this, which one would you choose? Uh, is there one that stands out to you as being the one that would really stand out to you as being the best option? I think that these could vary a lot um, depending on a program's budget, um, depending on program staffing. If there's somebody who loves making visual displays, this might be great for a program. If there's a program that already has a budget to do something like this, that would be a great option. Um, but you know, if there's no, bu no budget for that, probably not something that's possible. If visual displays are something they struggle with already, then that's probably not the way to go. So it's a great way to kind of foster discussion. All right, now let's look at another example um, that's more, that's not so much at operations level, but more looking at fundraising. In this example, we are going to ask the question, how should we fundraise uh, for our building's new computer lab for the after school program? So our common understanding of impact is we are going to get money for the new computer lab quickly and effectively. So a few ideas that um, people come up with is that we're going to have a letter campaign to our old donors. So this would be a standardized letter and it would be to donors who have already contributed to the program. So we know that they support the program um, but they might have supported us in other ways. So maybe they supported our sports program or our art program. We don't know if they would support the computer lab, but we do know that they support the program. So thinking about that, the effort maybe is kind of in the middle because we will need to write a nice letter. Um, we will need to get all of their addresses, make sure they're correct in the Excel documents, mail it and everything like that. But Luckily, it will be pretty standardized, so the effort might be on the little bit of the lower end compared to some of the other ideas in here. And the impact, 
I think we would say it will be maybe we'll say in the middle because it is pretty questionable. Um, we know they're supporters of the program, but we don't know if they'll donate to the computer lab. So maybe we'll put it on the little bit on the higher end, but I think we would have some questions about if that's a way to raise money for a full computer lab. All right, next up we would have that we're going to ask the board to reach out to individual donors. So we have a board that has a lot of great contacts. Um, and they're going to reach out individually. Maybe ask um, each individual to buy one Chromebook. So that's about a hundred and fifty, two hundred dollar contribution, I believe. So we know that um, in terms of effort, we're going to have to be on our board members, make sure that they are going out and making those asks. Um, and we think the impact will be probably high. They'll, each of our board members will probably be able to get at least one person, and since there's 10 people on the board, we'll probably be able to get 10 computers. So we're, our goal is to get 20, so we might be halfway to our goal, so we're going to say that our impact is maybe pretty high, but we're not going to quite get to our goal quickly. So we're going to put it here. And we're going to say it's in the middle of the effort because we're going to have to push our board members, and it might be a little more effort than we think at the start. The next suggestion is grants. And as we're making these um, post-its, ideally when you are brainstorming, you're going to have specific ones in mind. Um, if you don't know any, you might say, have to say, um, look for grants, or um, we know of the ASOS grants coming out, or something like that. So you'd want to be more specific. Um, I wasn't in my example right now, but you would want to be very specific because it's easy to get. Um, kind of caught up in generalities. Um, unless you didn't know the specifics, then that's okay too. So grants, as we know, um, take a lot of effort and sometimes uh, do not come through. So we would say that that is extremely high effort, um, especially if maybe we don't have a big development department. And while the impact can be big if we win them, it can be very low if we do not. So we're going to put that right there in the middle because that's a big question mark there. Some may suggest putting them as the wish list item at our gift drive. So maybe it is almost um, the holiday season and the after school program always does a gift drive where they um, ask for a few items for the program and um, perhaps donors always give during the holiday season. And so you've decided to list a few of the Chromebooks that you're asking for, whatever it might be. And so that is very low effort because you just put it on your list and hope that you get it. Um, impact, again, questionable, because will you get it? Maybe, maybe not, but it is incredibly low effort because you just put it on the list. So I would say effort, very low, but impact, again, very questionable. Then we had a suggestion of a bake sale at some of the after-school sites, assuming this is a multi-site organization. So. Um, we're going to assume that in the past these bake sales have actually been very successful. Um, there are some special events coming up at the school and the school has agreed to let the programs um, do a bake sale at there. And the after school programs have said that they would love to use the funds from the bake sales to go towards the computer lab. So you said, okay, well that is going to be pretty high effort on, those pro on the site directors, on the site coordinators. So it is high effort. But you think that impact could be pretty high because in the past, the um, bake sales have made upwards of, we'll say, $500. And so that right there will be a couple um, laptops. So you'll say the impact will be pretty high. Um, not quite the full computer lab, but you know that that will be some good money coming in. <clears throat> and then somebody suggested maybe a breakfast fundraiser. Um, you don't quite have the ability to put together a big auction or gala or a dinner fundraiser, but a breakfast fundraiser seems pretty doable. Um, and maybe somebody on your board has um, the ability to host, and really you just need to um, figure out how you can put together something a little more casual in the morning. 
So a breakfast fundraiser will be a lot of effort as any event is, but you do feel that it will have a pretty high impact because you do think that you would um, get a lot of things donated. So it will be very high effort, but also pretty high impact. So as we look at this example, I think we see that there are a lot of options here that while over here is kind of questionable impact, it's such low effort that it seems reasonable, just try it out. There's no harm in trying it. Um, the letter campaign to old donors, it's definitely something to think about. Think about how much effort is that really? And is that impact worth it? Or is it maybe something you save for a different ask? Um, and a lot of these, you know, since the impact is so questionable, it definitely warrants a discussion and really measuring what is that impact really going to be. And then thinking, okay, you know, these do require a lot of effort and they are going to require some planning, but it does seem like that impact is high enough that it's worth it. So they fall into the strategic planning and planning required quadrant, but likely are worth that effort, but just require some of that talk. So is doing both of them worth it? If that bake sale is already going to happen, maybe it makes sense to do that first, see how it works out, and then decide to do that breakfast fundraiser only if needed. So using this impact effort matrix is a great way to really get those ideas flowing and think about what is the best project to do or what's a good idea to really run with and try out. Now that you've learned about the SWOT analysis and the impact effort matrix, you're going to take some time to use either tool and um, use them with your team. If you work alone, that's fine. You can do it alone as well. Um, but I want you to take some time and really use either one to answer a question and really use it to brainstorm and think through it and come up with a solution or a new idea or a new plan. And then take some time to reflect upon that process and how it went in the forum. If you have any questions or need any support, again, always feel free to contact me with the Talk to Trainer button or emailing me at training at